All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to the weekend. It is uh, 11.31 a.m. California time here, January 11th, 2025. You're going to have to uh, excuse my voice here. Still got uh, a cold that came about here a couple days ago, so trying to deal with that. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 2.7 across the area of the uh, Mediterranean region there, it looks like, on the green flag. Let's go ahead and check out the West Coast here real quick, see what we got going on for California activity. Uh, after some elevated activity yesterday across the Bay region, we'll zoom in here, see if we've got anything else going on today. Looks like the majority of these quakes are from yesterday. Uh, for a total tally, um, looks like about nine earthquakes here in the last week. The majority of those were from yesterday, including that 3.6. So no further adjustment yet across that area. Uh, up in the Northern California here, a handful of earthquakes, including some this morning. Very shallow earthquake activity here, 3.4 and a 2.1, indicating the strain out here. And, uh, you know, one may consider this aftershock sequences there from the seven-pointer, and that may be, uh, but uh, still getting quite a bit of strain out here. And, of course, the sleeping giant up here, the Cascadia subduction zone, uh, has not seen any major release of pressure, and it looks like it's still putting the pressure on that region. Uh, Southern California down here, got some big time fires still raging, wind kicking up as well. Uh, a couple earthquakes here in the last hour around the Salton Sea area, that's uh, just off the Brawley Seismic Zone. Uh, the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, a couple smaller earthquakes here as well, up around the Garlock Fault Shear Zone, uh, some movement from yesterday and today. Uh, overall, just uh, keeping an eye on the California area, it's been a... Uh, active out here in broader scale sense of things uh, western nevada is still seeing some movement out there across the area as we look across the rest of the country out here well some movement up around yellowstone really nothing big showing up here but i do want to double check the yellowstone seismograph station overview see what we have not a whole lot the super volcano is super quiet not a whole lot of inflation not a whole lot of earthquake activity not a whole lot of anything happening there across that super volcano. Uh, let's see a little bit of movement outside of uh, Dutch John, Utah. That's actually on the, Cal the um, Colorado side, it looks like. 2.7 from early this morning. A handful of fault systems out there. A lot of older activity, older faults. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, out in Texas area, some oil fields getting hit. Same with uh, Oklahoma up here. There's a number of oil fields outside the uh, Medford area, as mentioned there on the map. New Madrid Seismic Zone, pretty quiet. Uh, some further activity here across the Mexico area. Of course, five-pointer coming in southern Mexico last night. A couple hours later, 4.2. Further up north, somewhat uh, shallower than the original quake. So keep an eye here on the Middle America Trench, showing some... Uh, some deep activity, and most of the time those uh, deep quakes there add further strain across the subduction zone. Pretty good cluster of earthquake activity out there in the last 24 hours. Puerto Rico area, a handful of quakes there outside of the San Juan area north. Some threes and twos here uh, yesterday and today. Take a look here at the Earthquake 3D Globe. South America region fairly quiet aside from the typical twos and threes down there on any given day. The Atlantic Ocean, quiet. Ethiopia rift boundary here. Uh, looks like maybe uh, another five-pointer stirred up here this morning, a 5.2 in that uh, area of the rift boundary. Obviously, there's some type of magma intrusion going on here across the region. No new information here in terms of any volcanic status. Uh, it's still sitting at a level three out of a five for minor activity or eruption warning. So anything could happen at any given time. Uh, it looks like there was at least 40 centimeters here of uplift uh, along almost the entire uh, access from Fintel to the Dauphin Volcano during the 17th to 29, 29th of December time period. So it's a broad scale event that's taking place out here. Uh, could lead up to uh, you know some bigger eruption activity out here because that's a significant magma intrusion out there it's not just confined here to one volcano area this is a uh, 30 60 75 maybe 80 miles here in length 
watching that pretty closely. So far, the depth of these earthquakes here, about six miles underneath the area. And of course, the latest one, a 5.2 earthquake out of 111 earthquakes here of decent magnitudes in the last 30 days. Continue to keep an eye on that. Uh, let's see what else we got here around the globe. Uh, still some aftershock sequences there outside of Nepal following that seven pointer there a few days ago. Uh, typical crunch zone activity. A little bit more active today than normal. Looks like the Philippines here, region uh, getting hit pretty hard with some threes and fours, uh, upper fours out there. Some renewed deep activity here across the Mariana Trench. That uh, should show up here on the USGS map. 60 mile deep five pointer here into the southern end of the Mariana Trench here outside of Guam. This region uh, in the last, oh, let's see here, last seven days or so, seen some deeper activity up north. Pretty deep one, 5.3 here back on the 7th. Uh, some further adjustment south now. So watch the entire area. Most of the time these uh, deeper quakes here are adding further strain up across the subduction zone interface region where we get the, the highest accumulated slip rate and strain. Big Island of Hawaii, aside from a couple smaller earthquakes here offshore and the uh, Pahala area. We'll go ahead and double check the uh, latest status here from Kilauea Volcano. See what we got going on. Hoping my voice holds out here, folks. Uh, webcams there across the area. Summit cam shows us still some volcanic gases there uh, from the main region. That's had a little eruption activity here in the last 30 days, along with a couple pauses. And uh, it's currently in a pause. Also some activity stirring up here. Uh, further down the crater wall. This may be a sign that uh, uh, something right in the middle here could pop pretty soon. Uh, it just kind of makes sense. Uh, not a whole lot of uh, eruption activity right now. And volcanic activity there is uh, kept to a minimum, or at least earthquake activity here is kept to a minimum, as noted on the uh, seismograph stations here. Goodness, I'm going to start turning into the earthquake whisperer. Because I have very little voice here, I'm telling you. I've been trying to... Um, <coughs> listen to a few of the comments out here in, in terms of, uh, you know, getting better, getting rid of this cold. And appreciate the comments, but it seems like nothing's helping at the moment. Just uh, congestion, super duper cough, and a little bit of lung congestion as well. But that's not the main thing. It's just my voice box right now. And coughing. Uh, let's see. Anything else going on across the globe here? New Zealand. Uh, some threes out there. It looks like really nothing major. Kind of see what happens here today as things get uh, put into motion. Uh, space weather activity. Fairly minimal out here. Man, I'm just hitting those highs today with this voice. Sipping, slipping down here into the B flare category. Look at that. That's crazy. That's uh, letting us know right there that things are very quiet on the Earth-facing side of the sun, a B category. It doesn't normally get like that unless we're looking at very minimal sunspots or sunspots that really are not all that active, and that appears to be the case. 3956 is a new sunspot. Look, you can definitely see the separation there of the core. That is not going to produce any flares in that type of position here. We start getting maybe some building up here. I might want to watch that. There looks like another individual sunspot core or a portion of the core, magnetically complex, interjoining the uh, areas of the outside of that sunspot region. So that could uh, turn into something. Right now, not so much, but we'll keep an eye on that one. 3947 over here, just pretty much completely um, disintegrated, it looks like, in terms of complexity. And behind that, not a whole lot. Uh, flaring threat out here is quite minimal. Let's see if we got the uh, far side watch is not up yet, unfortunately. That's still down. Hopefully they get that up because it's kind of nice to see what's going on behind the sun there in terms of, you know, sunspot areas. Right now, 10% chance. That's fairly high. I have mine set, uh, I think, at about 5% chance for X flare, but it's probably less than that even. M flare at 50% chance. C flare at 99, but 
even that uh, dipping down into the beef flare category. No major roars there in the forecast, folks. For now, a quick glance at the uh, close approach asteroids here. I've got a bad gateway coming in, it looks like. Not for sure why. We're still live. Yes, we are. Looks like those folks may be offline. Hear that, or they don't want me visiting their page. So, all right. Let's check out Storm Prediction Center out here, see if we got anything major going on. No severe weather there, really, in the forecast. As we look at the numerical models here, we've got another cold blast air coming down here for the majority of the country. That uh, appears to be a semi permanent uh, type of pattern out here. There's another deep trough bringing in a lot of colder air as we head into next weekend, along with some snow chances there in the area. After that, uh, maybe, maybe a pattern change out here across the West Coast. Could see a return of wet weather out here across Northern California. Southern California, unfortunately, not so much. So let's go ahead and check out, see what we have for the latest on the fire activity in Southern California here. The watchduty.org app is an excellent app to monitor and uh, view all sorts of uh, interesting stuff here on the fires. They gained, I don't know, I think 300,000 um, users. Uh, and that was a couple days ago, so I'm sure it's doubled that by now. But it's a handy-dandy type of app for your phone as well. Big fires right now. The Palisades, Palisades Fire over here across the Malibu region still burning with a couple hot spots extending northward here. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, that may be getting close to some further areas, further uh, community regions up here as indicated here on the hot spot uh, area. Oh, man, I hope these hope these guys get this under control. 11% containment for 22,000 acres. A couple of new hot spots over here on the uh, western fire perimeter as well. Um, Kenneth Fire looks like that's just about out. Hearst Fire as well. Uh, the other big fire is the Eaton Fire sitting at 14,000 acres. 15% containment. Not a whole lot of hot spot activity here, but uh, mainly up in the higher terrain. Um, up there in some probably some hard areas to reach for the firefighters, but uh, most of the time the aerial tankers will be uh, useful for that type of setup. Not a whole lot of hot spots detected down south. That is good. Not for sure what's going on here, but there is some type of hot spot being picked up on the satellite imagery. Uh, hot spot detection sometimes. It could be picking up smoke. I don't know, but uh, we'll watch that. See if anything doesn't take off from that area. Lydia fire is completely out. So as of right now, just the two big fires out there. The wind is expected to pick up here uh, early next week. Northern California, wind's blowing like crazy here. It's been blowing all day. Uh, outside of my neck of the woods here around Chico, we got gusts up to about 40 miles an hour. That should continue through the day. <coughs> Southern California here where all the fires are. Uh, got some wind up there in the mountains. Throughout the day today, things calm down. Not so much over here across the Eaton fire. Uh, Sunday, got uh, some further wind conditions out here around Malibu and the Eaton fire area. Just an off and on type of wind event. Monday looks to be a little bit more stronger offshore type of wind. Watch that pretty closely there, folks. It's just been a Almost a persistent dry pattern out here of offshore winds. And unfortunately, as I mentioned here, there's really no rain in the forecast for Southern California. They haven't had a drop of rain in like 10 months. And that's crazy because wintertime here, this is our normal wet pattern out here in the wintertime from roughly about November to March. So if we don't get any rain in that time period, well, summertime doesn't bring us rain. We don't get the thunderstorms out here in the springtime storms like they do here in the southern plains in the south and the northern plains there in the summertime. We just don't do that. That's a different setup out here. So our rainy season is right now, and it's high and dry, drying out here in northern California as well, unfortunately. Uh, here's a look at the uh, extended model run. Showing the west coast pretty dry up until... Again, about the 23rd, 20, well, maybe even later than that, 24th, 25th of January. This is a ways out here. This could obviously change. But notice, Southern California, 
Not a drop of rain down here. Northern California will be lucky if we get the return of rain. But even the Pacific Northwest is quiet in terms of the typical storms that hit out here. I'm telling you, it's a crazy weather pattern right now. We should have, uh, we should be, we should not be having these uh, type of events right now. It's pretty crazy. Let me check out the drought conditions because it's seeping in pretty quickly. Look at even Northern California back underneath some drought conditions. It's very dry right now at the surface levels. Down below there, it's still fairly wet, uh, but it, as you can see, it's starting to fill in. So uh, we don't get rain for a month. I guarantee you this is going to start getting into some moderate drought here for Northern California. Southern California, as you can see, high and dry. Not a whole lot going on out there. Super dry across the area. The deeper and even the surface levels there, all way below normal. Northern, Northern California and surface levels, levels are dry. Uh, deeper area. There's still a little area here in the Sacramento Valley outside where I live here in Calusa. That's still a little wet at the, uh, the deeper levels, but it's drying up pretty quickly here, folks. And uh, the fire danger... And the fuel moisture is still quite high out here. Fuel moisture is low, meaning that the moisture is super dry out here, but the fire spread potential still elevated out there across Southern California. So uh, just be prepared potentially for some more fire starts out there in Southern California. It seems like uh, that appears to be the pattern out there for now. Keep your eyes open and... Uh, you know, if you see something, say something. Do something about it. If you see someone lighting a fire, well, you might want to call the authorities there and let them know what's going on. Because there seems to be a lot of arsonist stuff going on out there in Southern California right now. All right, uh, I'm out of here, folks. I'm going to leave with whatever voice I have left here. Uh, I apologize for the uh, voice. A couple of folks here said I sound like Alex Jones. All right. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, it's annoying, let me tell you. This dry north wind that we have is not helping one bit. Have a good one. We'll see you guys back out here later tonight for the Saturday night update. Take care. Stay safe out there.